Urinary tract infections are extremely common. Around one in two women and one in 20 men will get a UTI in their lifetime. Plus, once you've had one UT challenge, you're way more susceptible to another in the future. That's why you just need Just Thrive's UT123. This product can actually prevent UTIs while maintaining your urinary tract health. UT123 targets both immediate and long-term relief. We've all heard to drink cranberry juice for your urinary tract, but did you know that for the full effects, you need the whole cranberry? Not just juice, but the skin, flesh, and even the seeds. Well, UT123 uses superior ingredients that utilizes the whole fruit. This supplement truly is the full package. So if you're someone who struggles with the constant urge to urinate, a burning feeling when you pee, pelvic pain, or just want to be proactive in your urinary health, Just Thrive is for you. Just Thrive is so confident you'll love their product that there is a 100% money-back guarantee on every purchase made through JustThriveHealth.com. And for a limited time, you can save 20% off site-wide at JustThriveHealth.com with promo code SEXWITHEMILY. That's JustThriveHealth.com and use code SEXWITHEMILY for 20% off your order. You're going to love it. Listen, alcohol is just out in 2024. There is a rising trend of going alcohol-free or being sober curious, and alcohol, the truth is, it's just bad for you and can famously impair your sex life. So if you're looking for another way to unwind, relax, or just have fun, I cannot recommend Vaya's THC gummies enough. Vaya has gummies for every occasion. Whether it's to improve your sleep, I love their sleep gummies, I take them everywhere, your mood or your focus, they even have an aphrodisiac gummy called High Love to boost my arousal levels. High Love has a unique blend of cannabinoids and aphrodisiac exotic herbs that are known for their libido enhancing effects. So I've been using Vaya for a while now and I absolutely love them. They're a super trusted company, they use premium hemp, natural ingredients, and they're known for their premium indoor THCA flower. All their products are made here in the U.S. They got quick and discreet shipping to all 50 states so you can all enjoy them, not to worry, and also super affordable. So head over to viahemp.com and use code EMILY at checkout to save 15% off your order. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Use code EMILY at checkout for 15% off your order and let me know what you think. Hi, I'm Dr. Emily Morris from sexwithemily.com. Do you want to last longer in bed? Promescent is the only FDA-approved treatment for premature ejaculation. One in three men suffer from premature ejaculation, but they don't have to. Go to promescent.com to get the desensitizing spray that will allow you to have the sex you deserve. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex relationships and everything in between. For more information about Sex with Emily, go to sexwithemily.com, where you can do everything at sexwithemily.com. You can listen to the show, watch the show live every day from 1 to 2. We're running a few minutes late today. Sorry about that. We had some little technical stuff going on here. And um, every day. And it's also on demand. So we've got four shows a week that we're doing And we've got free Friday coming up tomorrow. Every Friday, we are giving away our show for free. Yay! So you can listen to the show just like you used to. And they're hour-long episodes, and you're going to love them. And I want to thank everyone who's become a Friends with Benefits member. Because our Friends with Benefits members are so – we love them. They're so psyched. They get answers direct – they get their emails answered directly. So we get hundreds of emails from you. But when you're a Friends with Benefits member, it's like getting sex advice, like when on demand. You're like, oh, last night I had sex with this chick and this thing happened. And what do I do, Emily? I will answer you within a few days. You'll get your answers to all your questions. Plus, you get exclusive videos and you also get um, weekly sex toy and product giveaways. Just lots of fun things. So thanks, everyone, for becoming a Friends with Benefits member. It is $4.95 a month, which is like 15 cents a day, which is like nothing. It's like if you saw me at a bar and you were like, hey, Emily. So I love your show. Can I can I buy you a drink? I'd say yes. So this is the drink that you're going to buy me for listening to the show, and I appreciate it. So anyway, everyone, uh, thanks for listening to the show. We, Menace is out of town for a few days. He's at Lollapalooza in Chicago. He's a very lucky man because um, it's supposed to be super super fun, and um, hopefully he'll get laid and then share have those stories to share with us. He's got a he's got a he's got he's got a some a thing for women from the Midwest. So we'll see how that goes. So I, a lot's been going on. Okay, so last night we're doing this whole, you know how my interns have been very active in the show. They did their intern sex toy reviews. We watched porn together. Well, now we're all going speed dating t- together. But they actually went last night and pre prior to, I'm going next week because we're in different age groups. But prior to that, we went out for some drinks, which was really fun. And Kelsey, intern Kelsey is here. Hi, Kelsey. Hey, Emily. How's it going? Good. How are you? You came in a little late today. 
I know. I'm sorry. Did it have anything to do with the free shots from the bartender? Yeah, but you made me take your shot. I know. I did. I'm not a big shot taker, so I was like, hey, Kelsey, do my shot. And then she texts me at 7 a.m. that she's not coming in, so this is this is what happens. But it's fine. She's here now. I was up all night. <laughs> did you meet anyone on no, blind date? No. Speed dating? Laying away. So give us just a quick. We're not going to. We're going to do a whole speed dating show because it really is a phenomenon now. If you think about it, everyone dates online. Most people are dating online, or they're dating through like fixing up through a friend. This is a way that you can really meet people. Like you meet twenty. How many guys did you meet in an hour? Twenty. Twenty in Actually, an hour. I feel like there was fifteen. I have no idea. I was a little drunk. She was a little drunk. Oops, my fault. <laughs> so twenty. So twenty guys an hour. When do you ever meet twenty people in an hour? Face to face, and then you're done. Like an hour, you can be home for dinner. And I think speed dating is a great concept. It's been around for a long time, and so um, we thought we'd try it out. And I did it once years ago, and I did meet actually a cute couple cute guys. And we're going to be going into it after I'm going on Wednesday. You guys just went, and then maybe next Friday we'll talk all about it or Thursday. Sounds so, good. but did you meet anything you want to impart about it? Like, would you recommend it? Would you – any funny highlight moments? Let's just say that. We'll get into the whole – I don't – I mean, there was this guy who gave me his card, and he said he was a reality warrior. What does that mean? I don't know, and it said something about self-defense, and I was like, if you're a warrior, why are you at speed dating, you know? Yeah, exactly. If you're a warrior, just go pick up your chick in the woods <laughs> yeah. or something. So that was interesting. I don't really get it. That's really interesting. I don't know. I kept on – I feel kind of bad about it, though. I kept on being like – who does speed dating? <laughs> you kept saying that to everyone? Oh, my God. That's like everyone who dates online and starts their profile with, I never do this, but, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing this as a joke, blah, blah, blah. Did you tell them that you were doing it for the show? I, I did because they asked me what I did, and then it became obvious. Oh, okay. I was like, oh, I work at this podcast. Did you tell them the name dating. of it? Um, I think I told a couple of them. Okay, got it. Text them and they're like, you're on my list. And then there was a form we had so they could sign and we could have videos. And it was like sitting on my table. Oh. So everybody like knew. It was okay, kind of got it. That's fine. Right. <laughs> we had fun drinking. It was one of our entrance birthdays. And we did some water. We did some shots. And I didn't do my shot. And we had watermelon beer. And it was super fun. And then yesterday, that guy that I was talking about that I was hanging out with for a few days, he was in town for a few days. And we just hung out. We had some nice time together. And he actually sent me the most beautiful flowers. They were really gorgeous. They are like epically beautiful flowers. I'm, I'm so, I'm so blown. Away. When was the time a guy sent me flowers? I cannot remember, and it's been way too long. And I went, and I, and I actually texted him to thank him. And I'm like, you know what? If a guy sends you flowers, it's time to call him. You pick up the phone and you call him. Think. I think. I think. Maybe I'm old school. Maybe I'm old school. I'm like. So I called him and I was like, they're so beautiful. He's like, were they hydrangeas? I'm like, yes, they were. They're all purpley and beautiful. And I just thought that was such a night. And I'm like, oh, I never buy flowers, but I love flowers. He's like, women shouldn't buy themselves flowers. And I thought that was sweet. That Am I sweet. romantic? I love flowers. Do you love flowers? You I, might not I love, love flowers, flowers yet. And I it's do. true. And I always want to buy flowers. I'm like, oh, they're expensive. <laughs> and do I want to buy them myself? I'm going home for the store again with my own flowers and my own, you know, TV dinner. <laughs> That's my life. No. But uh, so I I, uh, I thought it was very nice of him. I thought there was like an old school nice like guy send you flowers. So I like him. He's cool. I'm He's down. cool. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. And then also I have to tell you. So, okay. We had a show a few weeks ago with a woman named Susan Bratton and Tim Bratton on the show. And they were talking about expanded orgasm practice where the man learns to uh, – Ohm. Did they call it ohm too? Yeah, they call it ohm. Where you're like so. ohming, where you the, the clitoris, if you didn't know, is broken into all these quadrants. So not only is it like this little thing you got to find, but there's like parts of the clitoris. And there's this practice that they practice that it's called expanded orgasm, or some people call it ohming, where they massage the clitoris. And it's very like you, and you take women to another place of orgasm, and you really, the man's, the, their energy sh- is shared, and it just, you have like longer, stronger, intenser orgasms. Would you, would you say that's what you? You got yeah. from that? So anyway, her husband, I know this is going to sound kind of freaky, but he's really good at, he's really good at oming. She, she's like, they have some kind of arrangement and she's like, he wants to own you. He would own you. Like he would go down. Like it's not sexual. We don't make out. We don't do anything. Like I think I'm probably naked or my pants are down and then he's massaging my clitoris, but it's literally for this practice that I've been hearing about for years that I kind of feel like I should do. But he emailed me again. He's like, do you want to do it? And I'm still real nervous. Well, here's another thing. So then another guy today called me about it. So another guy I met when we went to the, oh, 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 big guest on the show tomorrow who wrote a book all about this, Nicole Daydon. She wrote a book called Slow Sex. She's going to be on the show tomorrow. I'm so excited for her to be on the show. She wrote a book about it. And so I was at her book launch and I, it was, he's one of the dudes I met there. 
And he was like, I'm just learning, oming. Like, guys take this practice. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, dudes, of course, that's enough for a class where I get to massage a woman, whatever. But it's really – we're going to get into it tomorrow because I don't want to butcher with the whole philosophy and what it's about. But it's, I think it's more than just dudes wanting to get – touch a woman's clitoris, I think. I think it's fair to say that it's a much more like spiritual, emotional, like evolving your whole sexuality type of practice. So this other guy called me on the phone today because he's emailed me twice and I've ignored him. But let me just preface it by saying I met him at the party and he and he was cute. I mean, he wasn't not cute and he was nice. And he was like, I just signed up for Oming and I need a partner. Would you want to be my partner? And I was like, sure, call me. Yeah, because at the moment I'm thinking I should do this. Like... For sex with Emily, I just feel like there's a lot of things that I still want to and need to experience for myself and for my listeners because I like to experience things and share them with you. So I said yes. But then he's been calling and emailing and I've been avoiding him. You know how you do that? The things that you like don't really want to deal with, you just totally avoid. So I was completely avoiding it and I and he's like, um, I know this is like my third email to you and you probably don't want to do it anymore, but I'm trying again. And I was like, okay, here's my number. And then he called me. So we talked on the phone today. And he's like, do you want to just get together to do it or do you want to talk about it first? I'm like, I think we should talk first because I don't really know you. So he's actually coming in the office on Friday and we're going to go get a cup of coffee. <laughs> I'm so excited. Are you so excited <laughs> to meet? So I figured I'm not committing to anything. And this is, just, again, this orgasmic practice where you massage the woman. And I know it sounds freaking weird, whatever, but I, I want to learn. I want to have a coffee and see if I would jive with him. And while we're having our lattes, I can see if I could picture him touching my clitoris. And then I can know if I want him to do it or not and move forward with that. So you will um, – I'll keep you posted I'm on that. oming partner. How do I acquire one? Honey, I think I've got him coming out of – got oming partners I coming out of the woodwork. oming partners? Totally. And do you want to? I've maybe, got another yeah. one. I got two guys that emailed me about oming, and then the third is her husband. Yeah. I think you should be omed. I, I think I, I think omed. Alicia should – I think all of our interns should be omed. We're going to figure it out, but tomorrow's show is going to be epic, and it's a free show Friday, so everyone can listen to it tomorrow. Which is going to be awesome. Okay, today's show, I love the topic of today's show because I think we can all relate. Do you ever have those moments uh, during sex where you just go, um, awkward, that was awkward, that was weird the way he stuck his finger in this orifice, or that was weird <laughs> the way he made that noise, did he just have an orgasm or die, I can't tell. Just awkward moments, weird things that happen during sex, we're going to get into those awkward moments and how you deal with them. Plus, we're going to be reading the emails um, anyone can email me through my website. It's so easy. You go to Ask Emily, or you can email me at feedback at sexwithemily.com. And some of the topics include cheating via text, having sex with an old high school fling, and dating someone who's been abused. And we're going to get into that in a minute, but first we're going to do some sex in the news. What's in the news? What's in the news? <laughs> okay. Lots of condom stories in the news. Justin Bieber receives a shipment of condoms from Nuvo. Justin Bieber has reportedly received a shipment of comments from Nuvo brand condoms. The company is said to send the safe sex prophylactics to the baby singer due to his recent steamy PDA with girlfriend Selena Gomez. They give away over 200,000 condoms a year to prevent teen pregnancy. And they are probably looking for publicity, but also may have Bieber and Selena Gomez's best interest at heart. Uh, because the company wants them to, for, they want them for a campaign for safe sex and, and for abstinence. Uh, so I don't know if Justin Bieber's a virgin. Is he saying he's a virgin? Do you know? I don't know. I, I mean, don't think he's a virgin. This is like all these teen stars saying they're virgins. So they want them to do a campaign. I think that we need a condom company, and we'll do a campaign for you. We're not going to do absence. We're going to be like safe sex, get laid, and and um, these are the good condoms, bad condoms. We're going to do a whole condom review eventually. And we're yeah. going to give out sex with Emily condoms to people. But anyway, I think that we need a condom sponsor, so just call us. That's on our, that's on our list, right, Kelsey? Okay, so that's Justin Bieber. He got shipments of condoms. That's awesome. Uh, I hope that he uses them and doesn't get her pregnant, although it would be a good story if he did. But I don't want that for these underage youth. Aren't they underage? How old are they? 18, 16, 17. Yeah, how old is Justin Bieber? I don't know. He's like a baby. Should you even like be sending him condoms? He's 13 or something. He looks 13. I think he's probably 16. And he's now. not attractive. My nieces are so attractive. To me, he's a baby. He, if I was 17. like in junior high. He's 17 years if old. If I was in junior high, he's 17. I would be into that. Yeah, my niece is obsessed. Yeah, the hair, you know. Okay, ad campaign promises sex with a condo. An upstage brokerage firm launched a new ad campaign pulling a raunchy twist on apartment hunting. The new firm is marketing their pads to young professionals 
who are raking in the dough and are looking for something extra on the side. The spicy tagline for these new developments are, I don't remember his name, but his apartment. It's followed by one of four racy graphics, including one with the outline of a woman's legs and feet and heels lying on top of a man's lower half. The company's website is asking readers to write where they hooked up by emailing in their stories. One woman wrote how she ended up in a beautiful penthouse apartment. I would have killed for that kitchen. So it's just a new sexy cue. Everyone's using sex to sell something right now, it seems. Sex sells, but for a condo campaign. Okay, Trojan's, Trojan Vibrations truck provokes candid discussion about sex. So this is about the Trojan truck that we talked about a few weeks ago that's giving out condoms. As commuters made their way home from work along Avenue A in the East Village, New York, on Friday night, a small group of women in purple miniskirts climbed out of a purple and white truck that read Trojan Vibrations on its hood. The Good Vibrations trucks, as it's called, was promoting the new vibrator, the Trojan Twister. I love that they're all coming out with vibrators now. It's like not What is the condoms. Trojan Twister? I don't know. It's, it doesn't even say what it is. Um, Sounds like something we should review. I think we got to review it. Oh, oh, here it is. The video, you have to go to their Facebook page, and if you like it, you get a free four-speed vibrating penis ring. A four-speed ring. Okay, if you want a vibrating ring, let me just tell you that vibrating rings, I think, are the best invention because the C-ring has been around for a really, really long time. And they're, lots of times they're, they're really for men to help them with premature ejaculation, to help them stay harder longer. But in recent years, there's been this influx of there's been an influx of vibrating rings. And now you can buy them at Walgreens, like disposable. You can buy like higher end ones. Like if you go to Jimmy Jane, uh, jimmyjane.com, who we met with yesterday, they've got a great one that I love. And also adamandeve.com has a ton of them. And you can get 50% off one of them if you go to adamandeve.com and use coupon code EMILY at checkout. You also get three free gifts and a free adult DVD and free shipping. So anyway, these C-rings are awesome because – but now the new ones – have a little vibrator on the end of it. So it vibrates on the woman's clitoris while it also vibrates on his penis. And a lot of men think that, it, a lot of men love the vibration. Like, vibration's not just for women anymore, you know? It's like men like the vibration of the vi- the, on their penis as well as the women because it hits when they're having intercourse, hits the woman on her clitoris. So they're awesome. So everyone's making them now, and Trojan's got a four-speed one. Have you used one yet, Kelsey? I have not, but I have one sitting in like my nightstand. Honey, you gotta whip it I out. I know, I know. God, I was no thinking crush, about it yesterday, really. actually. I was just looking at it. Maybe this weekend. It's I almost know. the weekend. Tomorrow's Friday. I love them. Okay, this is kind of depressing, but I'm gonna read it anyway. But what a way for it to happen. A woman's hand severed during yacht sex. I don't feel bad for her. She was on a yacht. She's on a yacht. She's fine. I feel bad, but no. But I mean, I don't feel bad. She was on a yacht, but that kind of sucks. Like, you're on a yacht, and you're having sex, and what could be better? And oh, my God. And then she severs her hand. It appears they were engaged in a passionate act in the bedroom where at some stage, the sink broke. So she was doing the whole leaning on the sink on the boat thing, and the sink <laughs> broke and severed her hand. I wonder how long it'll take her to have sex again I don't know. That. After <laughs> six-hour operation, it was Ten put years back of therapy. On. <laughs> exactly. Like, therapy. Like, oh, my God, don't have sex in the bathroom. And... That would just suck if you were having sex on a yacht. Your whole day ruined. Like, what if it was, like, a really sunny, beautiful day, and they were about to go for a ride, and then her hand fell off? That sucks. Sucks. Sorry about that. Okay, J-Lo speaks, I loved myself too much to stay. Apparently, that means she was not in a good place in a good relationship. To quote Sex in the City, the most important relationship is the one you have with yourself. And if you can find someone to love you, the you you love, well, that's just fabulous. Meaning, if we all love ourselves, you have to love yourself before someone else can love you. I always say that. That's really true. If you don't love yourself and you're like, I'm fat, I'm lazy, I'm this, I'm not good at this, I'm not good at that, that's what you're going to be projecting out into the world. But if you're like, I love myself for all my goodness and all my flaws, just I really, truly, truly love myself. And it takes a long time to get there to a place where you love yourself. Because there's a lot of times you go through self-loathing and hating yourself. I don't know if you go through that. But a lot of people do. But if you just love yourself, that's when you get – that's when you can find, I think, a partner when you're in a good place. So J-Lo, anyway, is saying – she's all about that now. She opened up to Vanity Fair about her split with Mark Anthony and explains how she wasn't going to settle for anything less than she knew that she deserved. It's not that I don't love myself before. Sometimes we don't realize that we are compromising ourselves. To understand that a person is not good for you or that the person is not treating you in the right way – or that he is not doing the right thing for himself. If I stay, that I'm not doing the right thing for me. I love myself enough to walk away from that now. Sometimes it doesn't work, and that's sad. But I remain an eternal optimist about love. I believe in love. So he was treating her badly. 
is what she's trying to say. Mark Anthony obviously was not treating her very well. Right? That's what we think. I haven't heard. I don't know. I hear that he's. I, I, you've heard every, both sides of the story, but at least she's going back to love and probably having lots of sex right now. If you were J-Lo, newly single, like hot career on American Idol or whatever she's doing, she looks good. She's like, yeah, she does look good. She's like out there, like doing stuff. Get so some. <laughs> she's got to get some. I'm sure she has no problem, but they got the kids now and all that stuff to deal with. So whatever, she'll be fine. Okay. Let's get in some emails. Oh, first the poll. Ooh, new poll. New, well, I have the, oh, I don't have the new poll, but I have the results for the last poll that was up. This is what we asked. We asked, what is the sexiest city in America? The answer, the choices were Las Vegas, San Francisco, New York, and Miami. Sexiest city. What do you think? This is surprising. The one that came in the one that came in the lowest? The one that came in last for sexiest? Las Vegas, 13%. Really? Because you kind of associate <laughs> Las Vegas with like with with just sexiness, but it's also kind of cheesiness. So it's also kind of like crazy, crazy. You're running around, you're getting drunk, you're whatever. I don't know if it's like sexy. But they, 13% of people said Las Vegas. 13% of people said San Francisco. It's kind so of we're not sexy either. We're not that sexy. 20% said New York City. And a whopping 47% said Miami. Yeah, that's I what gotta I gotta agree. Miami is really hot. It's like always, it's like white sandy beaches, there's models everywhere. It's always warm. There's every restaurant. You can just sit on the beach and watch models like walk by and like couples and happy people and it's scantily clad and like then there's like techno music and like <laughs> bars playing like all day long like on the strip on the on the beach. Like South Beach is pretty sexy. So I'm down. That's what our listeners say. Forty seven percent. Do we have a new poll up there? We don't, do we? Okay. Well, we're gonna have one up and you're gonna check it out because it's gonna be up soon. All right. Let's get in some emails. What do we got for today? Okay, Emily, you have convinced me. I drove from Happy Valley State College in Pennsylvania to my home in southwestern Pennsylvania. And for the three hours of being on the road, I listened to all the podcasts that were snippets of each of the shows. To answer your question, hell yeah, it was great for me. Finally got into your website and became a Friends with Benefits member because I love your show and my personal sexuality has been reawakened. My second half of my 50s could be so good for me. Signed, Rob. Aw, Rob. I love Rob. <laughs> He's a new Friends with Benefits member. Thank you, Rob. That is just the kind. That's why I get up every day. That's why I wake up in the morning. Right there, Kelsey. I wake up in the morning because he his sexuality has been awakened by sex with Emily. And I don't want to, like, go off on a rant here, but I might. <laughs> this show has been listened to by millions of people. We've received hundreds of thousands of emails. We've hundreds of thousands of listeners and emails and people who've said the same thing, that by listening to this show, your sex life has actually improved. And because we give you tips every day that you can use, not just like weird tantric movements that you can't really do, but like real practical skills for moving forward. I give a lot of advice. And so anyway, the fact that he became a Friends Benefits member, I love that. And and he reawakened himself in his 50s. Nice. So perfect. Never too late to be learning about sex. Never, 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 never. People are in their 50s. It's like 50 is like the new 80. Swear to God. You think? Yeah. <laughs> 80s and 50. How does it go? No, but really, swear to God, people of 50s, 60s, 70s, people are having sex. Like, I mean, they're even saying sexually transmitted diseases have gone up for people over 50. Yeah. Because they're not used to the whole, like, thing, the kind of the thing. The whole, yeah, birth that, control oh, thing. Oh, birth control condom. They're like, whatever. What disease? What's this little, like, thick crab crawling on my pubic hair? I don't know. Um, but maybe if they got crabs. I hope they didn't. But they're getting other kinds of diseases. So just everyone should use condoms. Okay. Hi, Emily. Thanks for your show. I download every one of your podcasts and listen to them at work. They have a lot to do with how I get through my days and helps me with my relationship. I need advice on how to deal with my boyfriend. We have been together for over two years and we're both very in love with each other. He's a DJ at night, which involves him being around a lot of, let's say, floozy girls. I've recently been sneaking around and looking at his phone messages and he flirts very heavily with these random girls. I know he makes a lot of new connections to promote his nightclubs, but he does things like ask them to send him pictures. He's with, she's been with him for two years. Okay. I've tried to bring this up without mentioning that I've spied on his phone and he doesn't admit to much of it and always reassures me that the girls from the clubs means nothing to him, which I know they don't, but it obviously bothers me that he sends these girls sexual energy so easily and then doesn't have sex with me back home. Do I tell him I looked at his phone and just confront him about it? Thanks for what you do, Addie from Canada. Okay, Addie, this is not good. Listen, he's he's flirting, he's cheating on you, he's a DJ. I don't know if he's cheating on you, but he is a DJ. I I 
from personal experience, not personally, but I have many friends who've dated DJs, and this is just what you know about DJs. It's like dating someone like first year out of law school and they got a job at a law firm. Because I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do stereotype. And they got a job out of law school. You know, like first year law lawyers have to work like you know hundred hour weeks, and it's crazy. DJs have to flirt with women and stay out till four in the morning, and that's part of their whole thing and their whole ego of getting more people to listen to their music. And they flirt and they love it and they love the nightlife. He's a nightlife guy. He's a DJ. He's into the nightlife. He wants to be out to 4 a.m. every night, and he loves the attention that he's getting from being a DJ, and it fills his ego. So I don't even know that he's cheating on you, but I have a feeling that if you, if you found multiple texts he's texting with girls, that's just inappropriate because you've been together for over two years. So I would just say, um, yeah, I mean, I guess, honestly, these days, everyone looks at everyone's phone. I'm not saying you should look at the phone. I'm saying you should talk to them first, but he lied to you. So you could say, you know what? I happen to see your phone. And uh, I'm not down with this. You're texting these women. What's going on? And he's going to have a million. Oh, no, she's just a friend. She's my friend's, my friend's girlfriend. I really do. do, 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 do. But I, I I've, have several friends who have dated several men like this. And uh, seriously, DJs, not your best bet. For, uh, they're into the nightlife and out and women and floozy. Floozy. You call them floozy women. They kind of are. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with DJ music. It's when it gets past 2 a.m. And then they're out till 4 and they're all out partying and it's just. I don't know. What do you think about DJs, Kelsey? Do you I, think- I love DJs. <laughs> oh, you're younger. Okay, I'm, I'm a social you. manager at my house. So I always talk to but the DJs. But aren't the DJs like flirty? And couldn't you feel like you could get with them at any time? Yeah. no, Because they're like, the DJ. No, Your yeah, boyfriend they, and these women, feel, you feel like you could sleep with them. I, I have. Uh, well, yeah. they, they do this thing where they're like, oh, I need to store my equipment in your room, you know? Oh, this happened, so like, store last equipment week. in the room. See what I mean? They're great guys. <laughs> okay, let me, let me preface this by saying... DJ at a party would love him to be the one sitting next to me at a dinner party. Love the DJ. He's super fun. I'm just saying he's not your settle down with guy. Does well, he's in the DJ, DJ? <laughs> What? Does Menace do some DJ? Yeah, he does. Point. <laughs> exactly. Menace on DJ. I'm just, and I'm not saying all that, but I just think if you're catching flirty texts and he's your guy, no matter who, what, whether he's a DJ or not, but it's not a good thing. Yeah, they're sending photos. Photos. Like Why is photos? he asking another woman for a photo? You should never be asking another woman for a photo. There is no no excuse for that if he's your boyfriend of two years. So I think you got to talk to him and you got to just cop to the fact that you looked at his phone because that's what, how else are you going to do it. And he's probably going to have a million excuses, but again, I don't think it's healthy. And I know the whole DJ thing and I know the late night thing. And you love the DJ because the DJs are love. It's like the bartender last night. Yeah, they're night. My, my boyfriend though, so right. not a problem. But like the bartenders <laughs> are similar. I'm yeah. not, again, I have very good friends who are bartenders and DJs. Love them to pieces. They have the great personalities. They're out there, but they're also run by their ego. They love the tips, the flirting, the the whatever. The people love my music, so therefore they love me, and it's a whole ego thing. But we did have a hot little he bartender really last hot. night. We went out for drinks last night to get them all psyched for speed dating. I meant to get you psyched, psyched, not psyched. drunk. A little too psyched. <laughs> and the bartender, because it was Michelle's birthday, he bought us drinks. Yeah, shots. he bought her a drink, and then he bought us a whole round of shots. So nice. Of, and you think, what, what shots but, did we get? And it's like a... Lemon drop, some type kind thing? of lemon chopped right thing. It, I, I made you do mine. I know shot, I had to that go was to my work. mistake. I also finished everyone's beer. So. I know it's, it was good. So uh, <laughs> we're gonna get all into speed dating. If you've ever been curious about speed dating, I think next week we're gonna be doing the speed dating show on Thursday or Friday. So we are doing daily shows now, except for Wednesday. So hopefully you'll check back. Okay. Hey Emily and Menace. My name is Manny from London, UK. I love the show, and you guys, your your you, and yours guys' tips are helpful indeed. Menace mentioned he started a dubstep program called Wobble Wednesday. Much kudos. As living in the birthplace of dubsteps, it's truly insane to see it spread around the world. So dubstep is this, uh, sh- this music. Do you know dubstep music? Yeah, yeah definitely. Menace is really into it. Okay, he has a quick question, though. Is it ever weird to have sex with a high school friend after years of barely talking? Okay, this is from Manny from the UK. Is it weird I don't think it's weird. I don't, I would not, I've, weird, I could tell you weird sex stuff I've heard. Having sex with an old flame or someone you knew in high school, not weird. It happens all the time. It happens at the reunion, it happens when you're all home for Thanksgiving break, when you're home for summer break and you're at home and you sleep with them. Um, I don't think that that is particularly weird at all. Do you? No. No, you see him one night, you're all meeting up again, you haven't seen each other since high school. I mean, Again, I don't think you should have sex right away and rush into it, but to, 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 to hang out with a friend from high school that you, you had a connection with in high school and you never had sex maybe and now you want to. What about like your high school boyfriend? Is that a little weird? No, but my high school boyfriend, I told yeah, you Facebook he just me yesterday. You. I actually would have sex with him. No, I hope he doesn't listen to the show. But it was because <laughs> he was my first. 
Yeah. Wouldn't that be weird to go back and have sex with your first I again? I would never want to do that. Right. <laughs> He's my first guy that lost my virginity to. Wrote me a message on Facebook yesterday, random. So anyway, um, but I don't think it's weird to have sex with a high school friend. It happens all the time. People will hook up all the time from high school because you like, or there's like the unrequited flame that you never could get in high school. And then you, I have so many friends who have stories like the people who've written it that you like you see him again five years later and you're both single and it's like finally your time because she was dating the captain of the football team when you were in high school but now she's free or whatever so it's just awesome I don't think it's weird I'm not going to label you weird Manny as much as you want me to not going to say go for it go for the high school fling okay hey Emily I've been listening to your show for about a month now and I find it very entertaining and informative keep up the good work I'm 25 and for the last four years or so I've been somewhat of a man whore mostly because it's hard to find a girl who can keep my attention I finally found a woman who I'm very interested in, but we have still haven't had sex in the last couple months we've been dating. The farthest we've gotten is make-out sessions, fully clothed, even though she has slept at my place many times. It turns out she was in a long-distance relationship, a long relationship two years ago with a man who abused her both mentally and physically. When she didn't want to have sex with her, he would force it on her, and understandably, she remains pretty heavily traumatized by that situation. During a conversation about it, I asked, I, I, I asked someone. I asked if she'd ever been turned on by me, and she said no. Ooh, a lot of my gratification comes when I when someone comes from knowing that I am pleasing them. Should I continue being patient? Should I hook up and not tell her? Should I have the same conversation with her at the risk of losing interest? Help! Thanks in advance, Nick from Dallas, Texas. Well, Nick, here's the deal. Uh, okay, you've been a man whore. You finally find a woman you're interested in. And how long have you got? How long did you say he's been together? She's been in a relationship, blah, blah, blah. I think you got to have a talk with her. It sounds like she's got issues. She sleeps at your house. You make, I'm sure there's heavy petting involved, as my mom always said. Did your mom ever say that? Have you ever even heard that? I have heard that. Were you heavy petting in the car, Emily? Like, if I was with a boy? I'm like, yes, mommy was touching my boobies. So anyway, um, so you've been, like, probably just going through the motions. She's been sleeping over. She, she just told you that she she didn't find you attractive or didn't wasn't turned on by you. And it sounds like she was in a pretty abusive relationship. So... Uh, I wouldn't say you'd hook up and not tell her because that would further abuse her more. That would be dishonest. But I think you should tell her that if she doesn't start to open up sexually that you're going to need that, – that it might not be the right match or maybe she needs issues or she has, uh, needs some therapy. But I really think that you should talk to her about it rather than just going out and sleeping with someone else because what is the point of being with someone if you're going to sleep with someone else? You're saying she, you finally found a woman who you're interested in, but we haven't had sex yet. So I also find that interesting. Here's a woman you're totally interested in, but you have not had sex. Kudos to you for waiting for a while. I, I think it's great when people wait and don't rush into sex, but you have to know the whole picture. Like if the sex is going to be good. I know someone who recently waited three months to have sex with someone. They had sex, wasn't so good. Repeatedly, they had sex a few times for a few weeks. The relationship's over. So, you know, the sex, there was like all these issues. So I'm just saying, sounds like there's a lot going on here. You've convinced yourself that she's the one and that yet you're already thinking of cheating on her and you've never had sex with her. So I'd say you have a talk with her. Have a heart-to-heart talk with her where you're real and you're honest and you come from your place of, of, of what you need. And you're like, I, of not blaming her, not saying you, not you did this and you did that. But just, you know, I'm feeling like maybe there's some stuff going on for you. Sexually, it really makes me feel good to turn you on and I feel like I'm not doing that. And you could also just ask her point blank, what turns you on? What makes you hot? What can I do to make you feel good? You know, and open up the dialogue there because a lot of times you don't know. You know men, men learn from their last girlfriends, and unfortunately, that's a really bad place to learn because every single woman is different. So that's what I got to say. That anything else you got to say that, that Kels? Yeah, no. Um, have you seen Dexter? The show Dexter? No, you know me. No television. <laughs> There's actually a character in this show that's sexually abused, and she like can't even go near having sex. Yeah. Or anything. Like, it's a huge problem. It's a huge problem. I mean, it's it, it says that he forced her to have sex. That's basically could be seen as rape. Rape, yeah. And I would say that she needs therapy ASAP. That's a really good point, Kelsey. Like, I, I didn't, I don't know if I said that enough, but I always say people need therapy. So sometimes I think I say too much, but this woman really truly needs therapy. Or maybe there's a school counselor or someone she could talk to about about what happened to her. Because the, these kind of things that happen to women early on in life, um, it, you know, she's in her 20s. It sounds like you're 25. She's in her 20s. They don't go away. People think that time heals wounds, and it's really not time. It's work. It's getting into the wounds. What happened? How did it make me feel? 
um, how did it all go down? Reliving it is sometimes really painful, but that's how you release it. And otherwise, she'll just be carrying around these issues around. And she's probably developed all these issues around her sexuality and feeling comfortable, which is. So I wouldn't let your ego get burned either. You're saying that you feel bad because you're not pleasing her. I'd say she's shut down sexually right now and she's unable to be turned on. So that's what I think. That's my story. Okay. Dear Emily, I'm in. Uh, okay, I'll do this one. Okay. Hi, you very beautiful lady. Do you ever do any shows on the topics of exhibitionism and do you take calls during your show? Thanks, Marcus. Marcus, we do take calls. I meant to give out the phone number. I always forget. You could call in right now, 415-992-7392. We just started taking calls. Uh, okay, do we show a type of exhibition? Is it? Yeah, we do. We do. Uh, we did a fantasy, so, a fantasy show all about fantasies. And, and, and do you know the top fantasies for men and women within their top ten was exhibition? It was having sex outdoors, having people watch. And we also did a show last Friday, which was Fetish Friday, talking about that and a fantasy show. So uh, I would say check out our shows. But exhibitionism is a, is very common for men and women to want. So it's a top fantasy, right? Didn't we find that? Yeah, we should do a whole show on it and talk about like voyeurism. And voyeurism, all that stuff. we should. Let's write that down. Voyeurism show. Okay, so maybe we'll do one just for you, Marcus, because you wrote it in. We appreciate it so much. Thank you. Okay. Hey Emily, what is the best way to find a friends with benefits? I am a middle. I am middle aged and find the supposedly free dating sites to be frustrating. I am married but separated. We live in the same house. Ooh, for financial reasons, for the time being, also for the kids' sake. I know that eventually it will have to end sometime. My wife hasn't touched me in seven years. Ah, not that I want her any longer. Any suggestions? We appreciated Ken from Palo Alto, California. Okay, Ken, you're living with your ex. You're sharing a room. You're sh- I hope you're not sharing a room anymore. But how do you find a friends with benefits? Um, I'd say they're organic. I mean, I would not recommend going on Craigslist, like misconnection or not misconnections. Um, what's it called? Craigslist casual encounters. You know, you, you could go on Craigslist casual encounters, but it's always a risk. You could find people who want sex right now and in the moment. But friends with benefits really have to evolve. You really have to find someone that you like and that you're friends with. You become friends, you become acquaintances, and then you become friends. And both of you really don't want a commitment right now, and you're both okay with not having like a no-strings-attached relationship. It really is a mutually beneficial relationship if it works for both parties. It doesn't always work for both parties because a lot of times one person wants more than the next. Or you start out thinking, you're like, oh, no, we're cool. We're just friends with benefits. That's cool. You can have sex that you want, and I'll have sex that I want. Hopefully, we'll have sex together at the same time, want to, and it'll all work out. It doesn't always work out that way. Someone else falls in love. Someone wants more. Someone finds someone else outside the relationship. But I would say how you find it is just however you're dating right now. I would recommend dating online. And maybe you'll find someone that way that maybe you're sexually compatible with, but you don't see as a long-term partner. And maybe she'll feel the same way. And that could become your friends with benefits. I mean, everyone is meeting online. We just did a poll about this too, right? Wasn't that the top way people were meeting was online, I think? Yeah. So, or through mutual friends. But um, I think that the more honest you are, you know, it looks like you can only do a friends with benefits relationship right now because you're going through a divorce and separation and you're living with your wife. So I would just be honest with people um, and just say when you go out with them and just be like, you know, I'm looking for something casual now. Or, you know, maybe I think my, my experience with friends with benefits relationships, are they just sort of evolve into that? You can't really start out and be like, we're going to be friends with benefits. But a lot of times... They just evolve from sleeping together and you both have different agendas or, you know, you're, you're not into each other. You don't want a long-term thing and you both want to just have sex. Yeah, the sex is great, but the sex is amazing, is. but you don't want it. You want them just to shut the hell up when it's over. So good luck to you. I would say date online. I mean, seriously, it is how I go to Match.com. I go to OkCupid. Um, I guess I'd go to – what other sites are people using today? I guess that's, those are the big ones, right? Plenty of fish. Um, and Palo Alto, there's so many people I know, single people down there. And so uh, a lot of divorcees too. So I would think that a divorcee with kids as well who's really busy and maybe she's going through something and you guys are both kind of in the same place. She's got her kids and her life. You've got your kids and your life and um, – Maybe you can hook it up that way. How about that? Let's get in some awkward moments. Yay. Yay. Awkward moments during sex. Okay, today's topic is amazing. I'm so excited to talk about it because this is the stuff that happens. There are awkward moments during sex. It just happens. Like weird shit happens and you have to like, you have to get through it. So we're just going to talk about some of the common awkward moments and some suggestions about how to handle them. And here we go. Okay, awkward no, awkward moment number one. Poor timing. I think we're referring to premature ejaculation here. Oh, yeah. 
When this happens, he's more embarrassed than you are. Instead of berating him or acting hurt, ask for a rain check. You may also remind him about women sometimes don't climax a lot, despite the heat of the moment. Bottom line, acknowledge the awkward moment and move on. This is no time for shame or blame. The last thing you want to do when a man ejaculates sooner than you'd like him to is to make him feel bad about it. Um, it's awkward. It's weird. He is bla- he, Believe me, he feels he is making himself feel worse than you could even make him feel. Like the two of you, it would be he's already berating himself and feels like lesser of a man. You got to do the best part to be like, honey, it's okay. It happens to all of us. Sometimes, like, women don't orgasm. Sometimes men orgasm too quickly, and it just happens. Um, and, and I think you just got to brush it off and be like, no, I don't care. It was awesome. Felt really good. Done. Move on. If you make a big deal out of it, then it becomes a big deal. And then I think it actually helps perpetuate men who are premature ejaculators. I think premature ejaculators, a lot of it is psychological. I mean, there's the physical aspects to it, and there's a lot of stuff. We've talked ad nauseum on the show about what you could do to, to stop that. But there are just times when you just do it and you premature eject it. And the more it, you make him feel bad about it or he makes himself feel bad about it, it's a lot of it is mental. And he'll start to, every time, get nervous. Like, oh, my God, am I going to pre-ejaculate it? Am I going to pre-ejaculate it? Oh, there we go. I pre-ejaculate it. So, so what should he do to make it better then? Because well, they're the always like, oh, my God, well, I'm so Well, I think so you can sorry. do Kegel exercises are amazing. I, Kegel exercises for men and women. I have an app on the iPhone called Kegel Camp. It's for your iPad or your iPhone. And I just got another email about to say people are it's changing their lives. It helps men with people. You, mep, mep, uh, you, you exercise your, your PC muscles, which are those P-stopping muscles, and you stop and start the flow where you stop and start the flow of urine, and you practice doing contractions and releasing, contracting, and releasing. You can also use a um, penis ring that can help sometimes. You could also read a book. There's a book that's amazing called The Multi-Orgasmic Man, and it's the best book for men who are suffering from premature ejaculation. Okay. Okay. How's that? Awkward moment number two, someone passes gas. Ooh. This happened on Sex in the City. We were that do you remember yeah. that episode when Carrie she she was with Mr. Big and she had she farted and she he didn't she like all of a sudden didn't hear from him for three days and she was like, Oh my god, I farted, it's over. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. It wasn't fine. too bad though. Like I feel like it wasn't too she bad. She made a big deal out of it. Well, why did she freak out? I just think it happens and you laugh it off. You just, it's yeah. not a big deal. And you if you're with a dude or a woman who is is going to be like grossed out because everybody farts and everybody poops. Isn't there a book, Everybody Poops, for like two-year-olds? It teaches them about <laughs> poop. There's a book called Everybody Poops. Everybody does. They do. Uh, you're saying you don't and your girlfriend says she doesn't. She does. So according to experts, the average person passes gas about 15 to 25 times per day, and the friction of sexual intercourse can sometimes increase the gas. Next time it occurs, just don't let it kill the mood. Instead, shrug your shoulders, apologize for any smell, and change the subject. Or just laugh it off. Yeah, have a sense of humor about it. Don't make a big deal and don't judge. We all do it. Has that ever happened to you? Um, I actually had a guy who farted during sex once. Happens. What what happened? Were you, like, done with him or no? Um, it oh, was no, <laughs> you dumped him. I'm telling it was people not to really dump. Bad. I'm telling you not to dump. Okay, I dumped okay. him for like so that a wasn't the only reason reasons. that you dumped him. No, it was. It didn't help. I'm saying it that it's help. not a big deal, and she's <laughs> dumping guys for farting. It didn't happen. No, it didn't. No, help. it was. It was like a, he was just not good at all. I mean, this. Come on, let's be honest. We're down there. We're doing stuff. It gets all wetted and gooey, and you're gonna yeah, just what pass. About queefing. Really, queefing. Really We've got queefing on here. Actually, we're gonna get to that in a minute. Um, right? Awkward moment. Queefing. Let's just get into it. Almost every woman has experienced the infamous trapped air sensation in her vagina, which can lead to noises that sound a lot like gas. If so, it's common, and when it happens to you, just own up to your air in your vagina and giggle about it. In the grand scheme of things, it's not that big of a deal, and a loving and accepting relationship can weather it all. Dude, it's not a big deal. It happens to us because we're wet and there's air trapped in there. And we're wet because you turned us on and your penis is inside of us or your fingers and they're moving inside and out and it makes traps air bubbles and we make a noise. Big deal. You should be psyched. You should be psyched. We're wet. We're da da da. We make a queef. Big deal. I don't want to hear about it anymore. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of who cares. I'm tired of who cares. Who should care about that? Okay. Awkward number, th- number three. He suggests something you're uncomfortable with. Just because you love each other doesn't mean you'll always have the same idea about what about what you want in bed. When he suggests something that you're comfortable with, it can be a real buzzkill. When you, something that you're uncomfortable with, it can be a buzzkill. Instead of shutting him down, try for common ground. So here's the thing. He says, I want you to dress up like Little Mermaid. You're not down with Little Mermaid. That doesn't turn you on. You don't like the webbed feet or whatever. 
If possible, see if you can negotiate the fantasy so it includes elements that turn you on too. Perhaps you've always had a fantasy. You're like, you know what? I kind of like the schoolgirl thing. I've got this great little plaid skirt and I've got these boots and that turns me on. So could we, could we maybe do that? You know, maybe he's uh, into something else. So you need to negotiate the fantasies or whatever he's into. I'm talking about costumes. Maybe he's got a fantasy of sex outside and you su- could suggest how about we do sex, start with sex on our back porch in your fenced in area. Or whatever. Yeah, like you can start. Ravine. Doesn't have to mean that. It doesn't mean that's a deal breaker. It doesn't mean that like, oh, his fantasy is not like my fantasy, and oh my god, we're gonna fall apart. Negotiate, right? Yeah. Say like, not down with that, but I might be down with this. All of relationships are negotiation. If his fantasy is going to areas that make you uncomfortable, you may need to nibble his ear and say, you know, hon, you got a great imagination. Could we use it to find something that turns me on too? That way you're passing it, you're praising him as well as encouraging him instead of shutting him down. Because so many times men just feel completely shut down during sex. And it's really hard to build them back up. I mean, men are fragile creatures and they always, they really do, many of them and women, of course, but they want to please, they want to do the right things and they really want to talk to you about what your fantasies are and they really have fantasies that they want to act out on you. And so they finally got up the courage to talk to you about it. And even if it's something you're not down with, you don't want to, you don't want to bust his balls that's, that's his fantasy. Maybe you do. But no, you don't want to make him feel bad and insecure about it. So just like let, you know, you can just say, honey, let's try to find something together. I think that's a great solution rather yeah. than making him be like, oh, you're so disgusting. You're so dirty. I'd never want to do that. Oh my God, what's wrong with you? Like that's his biggest nightmare. And that's going to, that's going to wreak havoc on him. Yeah. What happens when they just go for it though? You know When what they I mean? just go for it? I think that's inappropriate. I always say that every time, every sexual act that you want to try with your partner, like no matter what it is, you should always start slow. So let's say you want to spank your partner. Yeah. Start with a light tap. See how she reacts or he reacts. Yeah, not the like. (laughs) Don't just wham, wham, wham. 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 Or if you want to like play with their nipples, like start with like a nice little pinch rather than like getting out the clothespins and pinching, you know. Slapping of the You should just really start (laughs) slow and um, that's what you should do. And I just would say you've got to gauge your reaction. You got, women are supremely good at reading people. Men have a, men are, men could do it too, but men, it's more of a learned skill. So you really, during sex, one of the most important things you have to do during any kind of sex you're having is you have to pay attention to her body movement. So how, to her movements, like how did she react when you did that thing? Like, like if she was like, I said, ouch, you know, might back off, but don't just force something on her. Does that answer your question? Yes. Awkward moment number four, accidental injury. Okay. Think about it. Accidental biting, scratching, a jagged toenail that cuts the skin, a pulled muscle, a leg cramp. Have you ever had any of these? Yeah, actually. Like what? Like what? Well, that or when they're like on top of you and they're like crushing something or like your arm or like you're like trying to pull it out and you can't and stuff like that. It's always so weird. You're like, ouch. Oh, like you're in the middle of this hot moment. You're like, ow, ow, ow. Like, My leg will cramp up. Right. So you just laugh, right? You don't make a big deal out of it. It's not like, unless it hurts and then you got to get up and take care of it. Yeah. If you really hurt and there's blood, like get up and take care of it. But, um... You know, not a big deal. What about, I just passed over this one, but what about, uh, did you ever have a guy suggest something that you were uncomfortable with? They usually just go for it. <laughs> That's why you asked the question. That's why. Okay. Yeah, so, no. It's... I wouldn't say that guys should just go for it. I'd say like, okay, let's say you're interested in anal even. Like start with your pinky or like start just kissing that area or touching that area. Yeah, don't try to stick go your... for that. Yeah, that is, don't just stick your penis there if you want to try anal. That is a great point. You don't. You start slowly. You start with your hands. See if she's turned on by that area. She might not be. That is an area where men go for it, isn't it? Yeah. Don't go for it with the anus right away. I'm telling you, <laughs> don't do that. Okay. Number five. Awkward moment. Number five. These are the awkward moments during sex. Okay. Someone utters the wrong name. Never happened to me. The brain is an amazing <laughs> organ, especially during sex. You're less apt to think before speaking. If it happens to you, his or your feelings are bound to be hurt, but remind him of how much you love him. Just be like, sorry, babe, sorry, I don't know where the name Keith came from. Uh, he was my guy at the gym this morning. I don't know what you say. Who is Keith? I don't even know. I just see who's Keith. I just made up Keith. But I think that, um, yeah, people do utter the wrong name. Sure, he's like, I have people, my mom and my stepdad have been together 30 years, and sometimes she'll call, he'll call him by her ex, his ex-wife of 30 years ago. Like, names just slip out. He'll be like, Dora! And she's like, I'm not Doris. Like, Can you, like, play ago. it off? Like, oh, it's like a nickname. I've done it. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a pet name. It's my, my ex-boyfriend. It would be a great pet name for you. My ex-boyfriend's <laughs> name. Um, but that, these are just some funny things that do happen during sex. So, yeah, that, I, I've called, used to call, my, my dad got married so many times that I used to call 
his third wife by the second wife's name. That pissed her off. Yeah. But that wasn't during sex. But you do it sometimes because you're used to someone in a certain situation. So you're used to having sex with this last person. And so in your mind, the way it's wired, you're like, oh, I, yeah, sorry, Bobby. Oh, you're not Bobby. I, I don't think I ever really say anybody's name during really? sex. Really? Like I'm never like shouting their name. That's you know? good. That's good. Mm. Sometimes it's better not to. Or just say honey and baby. Really? Just say baby and honey. <laughs> Listen, just use pet names and then you don't have to worry about calling someone just by not, the wrong name. Just not babe, right? I don't like babe. I like baby. If a guy calls me babe, I'm kind of like, mm, but baby is hot. That I don't is know hot. why. But some people love babe. I'm yeah, not saying some people discriminating. Are babe people. Some people love baby people. Okay. Awkward moment number six, your kids walk in. It's the moment every parent <laughs> dreads. You thought your five-year-old was sound asleep, but then she comes and asking for a drink of water and catches you in the act. Sometimes children find sex confusing and think couples are fighting or hurting each other. If you find yourself in this precarious situation, it's best to address your child's concerns immediately. You can say, sometimes mommy and daddy are very affectionate with each other. And that is what she, and then what she saw is what normal married people do. And then invest in a lock on your door. You should what always lock like your, your door. teenage children? Oh, my How God. How do you deal with that? When a teenage child walks in, that's really embarrassing. Hopefully they know better as teenagers. Why? Did you walk in on your parents when you were a teenager? No, I didn't. But I had friends who did. Oh, my God. God, teenagers should know that they're not just parents just don't even lock go the in door. the bedroom. But I guess why it's hard for parents to lock the door with the babies is because like, they, they want their kids to be able to come in the room. So just knock. I walked into my mom having sex once with her, um, with my stepdad, her, her second husband. And it was so awkward. He answered the door naked. It was weird. Oh. But there's a lot of people who have stories about remembering seeing their parents having sex. that's like scarred them or not even scarred them, but just even just like that was the first time they had any, they had seen sex. Yeah. That's how it happens sometimes. Okay. Awkward moment number nine when you get your period. Happens to all of us. Happens to all women once a month for a week. A week or less, we're going to have our period. And so we, we did a show on this. I think we did a whole yeah, show on did. this. But menstruation can be an uncomfortable topic for a lot of people. So it's important to talk to your partner in case he or she is not comfortable having sex during your menstrual cycle. Which I found lot, lots of, some guys are and some guys aren't. Some guys are like, I don't care what's a little blood. We'll get in the shower after. Put a towel down. You should always put a towel down. Women, actually, some women are a lot more turned on during when they have their period. So they actually want to have sex. Um, and some are just, I don't want anything in there. I've got cramps. It hurts. And some guys don't want, are uncomfortable with the sight of blood. They just are. And I, I know that there are both men out, both kinds of men out there who are like, bring it. Messy sex is hot sex. I, I mean, seriously, there are guys who are like, I don't care. Put a towel down. We'll get bloody. And there's some guys who are like, oh my God, if I have blood on my penis, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> so it's really, that's true. There are some things you can do if you still want to get it on, but you're worried about the mess. You can try these soft cups. They're similar to menstrual cups, but shaped like a diaphragm, so it sits further up in your vagina over the cervix to collect flow while still allowing for penetration. The only downside is that she sometimes can be felt during sex, and women find them uncomfortable and messy to use. So there are some other things you could do. You could also try having sex in the shower or the bathtub. But what's been your experience with men? Have you found that they've been okay with period sex or not? Or don't you think it's a mix? What do you think? Yeah, I think that guys are pretty cool about it now. I don't know. I used to never tell guys when I was on my period. I just like would like avoid the subject. Really? And now I feel like everyone's pretty cool about yeah, it. Yeah, you're like, oh, by the way, it's a time of month. Yeah. But and it's never like, oh. it's never fun. It's never like, no, oh, it's I'm never so sick. Like, like, yeah, guess yeah. what? I have my period. And you, really, you always want to hook up and then you're like, oh, I've got my yeah, period. Yeah, and they're like Sorry. kind of going for the pants and you're like, exactly. Oh, it's kind of annoying. About that. I know. <laughs> okay, so I think just the period thing, you got to have the talk and just see if you're you might be down with it. He might not be. You got to just discuss it. Discuss it, discuss it, discuss it. Okay, weird noises. Awkward moment number 10. Weird noises. What's the weirdest noise you've ever heard? Okay, so my intern told me a story today about someone she knows who he she was with someone and he made a noise, I think when he orgasmed, like a baby seal. How does How a baby does sound? seal sound? Ah! I don't know. Oh. But that would suck. That would kind of be a buzzkill. Yeah. Um, a baby seal or maybe a whale. I don't know what they sounded like. So whatever it is, sound, but just ignore it and don't make him self-conscious. Because the thing about sex is, so maybe he sounded like a baby seal. But if the sex was good and it might have made you feel awkward, people make, I think it's, it shows that they're letting themselves go and they're losing their inhibitions and they're letting go and maybe they sound like a baby seal. So if you can hang with that and not judge him, that's fine. It might freak you out and make you unattracted to him, but hopefully you can just let it go with that's his noise. Have you had weird noises? Um, 
I've just had weird things being said. Like what? I, I think I was telling you before on my online dating man, the the continuous, like, babe. Oh, oh babe. he prematurely babed you. Yeah, he just said it, like, 50 times during yeah. sex. Oh, babe, or, babe, babe, And then there was, babe. like, one big, long babe at the end. Really? <laughs> like, when he babe! Climaxed? Oh, he was coming. Oh, my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> I had a guy, or what about if the guy makes no noise? I had this yeah. guy that I did not know if he orgasmed or not because this is what he did. So we'd be having sex. I'm like, you know, you can tell when a guy's about to yeah. orgasm. You know, everything is quicker tense and faster, and tense. And he was like, he was like, uh. like it's almost like I, like I'm like, did, did, did you just did, like, uh, could you even hear that? Like, yeah, a, like a poof. It's terrible when they make no. Why noise. make no noise? I think that that's the more repressed male. Um, and female, I don't know, I don't want to judge again, but sex is about letting go. If you want to have the best sex of your life, you have to be able to let go to have those amazing orgasms. You have to be able to let lose yourself in sex and not be so self-conscious. But also, I think, to men's credit, a lot of men learn to orgasm in their bedroom when they're 14 years old and they're afraid of their parents walking in, so they don't want to make a loud noise. Yeah, it makes sense. So they're kind of quiet. But I think the older you get and you're having sex, it just feels really good to breathe and to like express yourself and let yourself go. Even if you sound like a baby seal. Okay, that's all we got time for today, <laughs> everyone. We've got some more of these. We I love these awkward sex moments. We'll, Are we going to continue? We're going to continue. Have another continue awkward tomorrow. sex day. Awkward sex week. Tomorrow, oh no, tomorrow's a big day. Tomorrow's Free Sex Friday. You get to hear Nicole Day Doan and her book Slow Sex. It's all about amazing orgasms for women, and I'm thrilled to have her on the show. So thanks everyone for listening. Thanks so much, Kelsey and Alicia, for everything. I appreciate it. Thanks everyone for listening to the show. Email me at feedback at sexwithemily.com. Was it good for you? Oh, was it good for you? Email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com. Hi, I'm Emily from Sex with Emily. Good Vibrations carries the hottest toys and vibes. I love the Jeju Mimi because it's discreet yet powerful and great for couple sex. Find out how much pleasure your body can really handle. Use coupon code EMILY for 15% off at goodvibes.com.